Hiya, we're going to look at the chord progression for Fly Me To The Moon. We're going to start with an A minor 7. First finger on the first fret of the B, and the second finger on the second fret of the D. We leave out the low E string and we just strum the top five strings. Now, in terms of strumming, I would suggest adopting the Freddie Green strumming pattern for this tune at the start. So, Freddie Green used to do four down strums per bar on his chord, so we might be like. following that kind of vibe. Now you can use a plectrum, that's cool. You can use your thumb or you can use the back of the index finger. That's up to you. Each one offers a slightly different sound, so you might want to check out the kind of options there. Right, from the A minor seven, we change to a D minor seven. Now the first finger goes across the B and E strings, if it can do that, and the second finger goes on the second fret, the G. And we just strum the top four strings for four down strums. So we've got A minor seven and D minor seven, and then we go to G seven. Now I like to think of this version of G seven as like a kind of stretched out C. We pop it on, you'll see why. Third finger, third fret, low E. Second finger, second fret on the A. First finger on the first fret of the high E. There we go. Strumming all six strings. So we've got A minor seven, D minor seven, G seven, and then C major seven gets two beats because it shares a bar with C seven. C major seven is like a C, but we just lift off the first finger. So we should have the second finger on the second fret of the D and the third finger on the third fret of the A. And we leave out the elephant string and strum the top five. It's a beautiful dreamy sound, that C major seven. Then we change to a C dominant seven. Keep the second and third where they are, pinky, onto the third fret of the G, and the first finger onto the first fret of the B. And that gets two beats as well, half a bar for that one. Okay, I'll just demonstrate the first four bars. Try and familiarize yourself with the order of the chords. A minor seven, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven to C seven. Okay, that's four bars, because the last two share a bar. We're gonna do four down strums, Per bar. One, two, three, four. A minor seven, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven to C seven. Now that takes us to bar five, where we get F major seven. F major seven is the third fret of the D, second fret of the G, first fret of the B, and the fret number equates to the finger number, so first finger for the first fret, second finger for the second fret, etc. We strum the top four strings and we've got that lovely open E string open on top. Lovely. Then we go to a B minor seven flat five. Some people call this B minor seven um, flat five, some people call that B half diminished, so you might see it written in a couple of ways. Now, first finger on the second fret of the A, second finger on the second fret of the G, third finger on the third fret of the D, and pinky on the third fret of the B. That's the sound for that. Now the second and third fingers are in the same place as they were for the F major seven. So that even though the chord's a bit scary, sounding in terms of the name, it's quite easy to get to from that F major seven. Okay, from the B minor seven flat five, we go to an E seven flat nine. Now our third and fourth fingers can stay down here. They're already in the right place. Second finger moves to the second fret of the A. First finger moves to the first fret of the G. And we strum all six strings. Lovely, so we've got B minor seven flat five, E seven flat nine. Then we go A minor seven, to A7. We've seen the A minor 7, so I'll just talk you through the A7. Second finger on the second fret of the D, third finger on the second fret of the B. Leaving out the elephant string, strumming the top four. Okay, let's take that about five to eight. So we've got F major 7, B minor 7 flat 5, E7 flat 9, A minor 7 to A7. Yeah, now again, bar eight there is two chords in each bar, yeah, so each chord gets two down strums. Let's try it from bar five, F major seven first. A one, two, strum, now. Now you can hear 
hear things are building somewhere there. After eight bars, we've kind of moved to a little, little bit of tension. Then we go to D minor seven in bar nine. We've played that one already. Then G seven in bar 10, we've played that one too. And then C major seven, we've seen that one as well. Now E minor seven in bar 12. Now E minor seven starts off with a simple E minor. First finger on the second fret of the A and second finger on the second fret of the D. The third finger goes on the third fret of the B and the pinky goes on the third fret of the high E. We strum that one twice and then we change to an A7, which we've already seen. Now this time I'm using my first and second fingers for A7 just because of the way it's a bit easy to get to for the E minor seven. That's up to you to experiment with. If you find the four finger version of E minor seven a bit tricky, you can play it by just putting your first finger on the second fret of the A string. That's an E minor seven two. Not quite as nice as the four finger version. Okay, we've played through, or we certainly looked at the chords for 12 bars there. We're not quite finished. It's a 16 bar melody, basically. It's a 16 bar chord progression that needs to go under that. So, bar 13, is another D minor seven, and 14 is G seven, and 15 is C major seven. So bars 13, 14, and 15 are the same as bars nine, 10, and 11. You might need a chart in front of you to see kind of that relationship, but that's good. Repetition's always good. If we get to do the same thing again when we're playing, that's cool because we already know how to do it. Okay, so bar 13 was D minor seven, 14 was G7, 15 was C major 7, and we're coming to the end of a 16 bar cycle, and we're going to play that pesky B minor 7 flat 5 again to E7 flat 9. Now there's a thing, in this tune, any time you play B minor 7 flat 5, that one, it's followed by E7 flat 9. So at least there's that little kind of trick we can remember to remember the next chord in the progression. Cool. That's the first 16 bars of this song sorted in terms of chords. If you're struggling with any of the chord shapes, kind of the dexterity required to get them pressed on, that is stage one. Stage two is practicing a couple of the chord movements with the Freddie Green strumming pattern. Yep, yeah, that four down strum per bar. Then see if you can play through four bar sections, then see if you can maybe glue in the next four bar sections onto the previous one. So you might end up with eight bar progressions. And then ultimately we're aiming towards a 16 bar playthrough. Okay, now you might be thinking, that's just 16 bars, there's more to go. The brilliant thing is the second 16 bar section is only different for one four bar chunk. We'll come to that in a moment. Okay, let's play through from A minor seven, bar one to bar 16. I'm gonna have a sip of tea. You might wanna kind of take this opportunity to go back to the video and think you're not ready for those 16 bars yet, so do that as I am. Um, do that. Okay, now from the top, A minor seven. Try and get some of the kind of upcoming chords in the bag, kind of in terms of memory. So A minor seven, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven, C seven. See if you can kind of store some of them up so you've kind of, Plan ahead, yeah. Here we go. One, two, three, four. To D minor seven, to G seven, to C major seven, then C seven, F major seven, B minor seven flat five to E seven flat nine, A minor seven to A seven, D minor seven. G7, C major 7, E minor 7, A7, D minor 7, G7, C major 7, B minor 7 flat 5, E7 flat 9. And then we'd be into the second 16 bar progression, which don't forget isn't too dissimilar. Okay, let's look at the second 16 bar section of the chords for Fly Me To The Moon. The first four bars are the same as the first time through. A minor seven, D minor seven, G dominant seven, C major seven, C seven. The next four bars are the same again. F major seven, B minor seven flat five, E seven flat nine, A minor seven, A seven. 
it's the next three bars that are just slightly different. It starts with D minor 7, G7, then it goes E minor 7 to A7 because it needs to treat the melody a little bit differently there because the tune's doing something different. So that section, the third section of four bars, the second time through is where we get something different. It still starts with D minor 7, G7, then it goes E minor 7 for four beats, a full bar, to A7 for a full bar. And then it's D minor 7, to G7 again. Now we get C6, which we haven't seen yet, before we do B minor 7 flat 5, E7. Okay, C6. Start off with an A minor for me. First finger on the first fret of the B, second finger on the second fret of the D, third finger on the second fret of the G. That's an A minor, isn't it? We leave out the elephant string, the low E string, we just put our pinky on the third fret of the A. And we strum the top five. It's a really sweet sounding type of major chord of C6. Okay, so then it's B minor seven flat five, E seven. And that is bar 32 we've just arrived to. I'm gonna try and succinctly kind of um, straightforwardly explain how the chord progression is different the second time through. So you've got a 16 bar progression, then you start off a new 16 bar cycle and the first 10 bars are the same as the first time through. Bar 11 and 12 the second time through are different. You could think of that as bars 27 and 28, but you might get a little bit confused counting that far, so I think 11 and 12 the second time through. Bars 13 and 14 are the same, it's just bars 15 and 16 that are ever so slightly different. It's still like a C and then a B minor E7 thing, but they're just slightly char different characters to the chord. I hope that makes sense. It will make more sense if you're kind of listening to me bang on about that with the kind of chart in front of you. Okay, awesome. Let's try the second 16 bar progression. So we played the first 16 bars and we start again with an A minor 7. Okay, here we go. Uh, one, two, play now. A minor 7 to D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7, C7 to F major 7, B minor 7 flat 5, E7 flat 9. A minor 7 to A7, D minor 7 to G7. All that was the same. Now E minor 7, A7, different, yeah? D minor 7, same as before. G7, C6, B minor 7, flat 5 to E7. That's the second 16 bar cycle. Okay. Then we get an instruction on our chart that says D, C, Al, Coda. And that means go all the way back to the start of the song. And usually this is where someone like Frank Sinatra had enough of singing and he might hand over to his kind of big band and different instruments would take a solo. We go all the way back to the beginning. We play through the first 16 bars again, exactly the same. And we play the first 10 bars of the second progression. And there above, bar 11, we might have missed this the first time through, there's an instruction and it says two coda and there's a circle with a crosshair over it, the coda symbol. Down by bar 33 at the start of the bottom line of the second page, there's another coda symbol, the circle with the crosshairs over it. We skip from the two coda instruction all the way there and that's where the, we end the song with a little five bar progression of E minor 7, A7 and we get D minor 7, G7 to C6 to end the song. Now a very common device for this type of music, this kind of jazzy swing style, is to end, we might play the E minor 7, A7 then we might do what we call a three time tag. So rather than playing D minor 7, G7 just once, we play it potentially three times. It kind of brings the song to more of a cushioned ending and the audience get a chance to go, ah, they're ending brilliant. So I'll show you how that would go. 
you've got to imagine we played the first 16 bars all the way from the beginning, the second 16 bar progression, followed the DCL coder instruction back to the start, played through those 16 bars again, played the first 10 bars of the second half of the song, hit the Tacoda instruction, jumped to bar 33 on the chart where there's an E minor 7 and we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, E minor 7, A7, then D minor 7, to G7, to D minor 7, to G7, third time, D minor 7, to G7, and then something like that to finish on the C6. Yeah, it just allows the melody to conclude. Awesome!